said times in his rhymes cause his memories We running through New York so you never leave Shut my lungs then we puff until we're that right We're giving them some stories they come back like Manic this, manic that, why you crawling to me? Okay guys, welcome back to the channel So today we're just going to be going over Nine items that will need to be replaced When your M52 engine gets to 100,000 miles Now a lot of people ain't aware of this But if these items ain't replaced I'm telling you right now You're going to end up with failure And you don't want that And your engine will end up running like crap And this is why a lot of you have an M52 engine And it's not running very well at all And this is why I'm going to go over Nine items that need to be replaced at 100k It's detrimental to your engine Especially on the M52 engine That you replace these components Okay guys, so as you'll see right here, the first one that I'm already looking at, which a lot of you are already aware of, is the oil filter housing gasket and oil cooler gasket. Now these like to start failing at around the 80k mark, but it's possible for them to start failing at 100k depending on how you have prolonged the life of the car and so that also goes for the old owners as well. Now, that being said, it all goes by the maintenance of the car and if this car's been looked after, but they can fail beforehand and you want to get that replaced because what will happen, as I'm going to tell you, it will leak down onto your belts and end up derailing your belts. It's very, very vital that you replace this part immediately as it can end up in catastrophic failure for your whole engine, which a lot of you don't want because what happens is the belt can end up going in the sump, the crankshaft will wrap it around and completely destroy the engine. So it's something that I strongly recommend doing. I also recommend changing the bolts as well, just because they're al aluminium. And if you end up threading getting them off, you won't be able to get them off the next time if you ever need to do it. And I would advise using a genuine BMW dealer part as well, because the Chinese parts are known and prone to leak again, and you'll be back there doing it again. It's not something you guys want to be doing. This is a one-time job, and one time job only the next one guys is going to be the van of solenoids now as you guys know they end up reaching their limit and obviously they end up failing a lot of people go on about cleaning this and cleaning that and telling me they've cleaned their solenoids and they've still got the issue you can't clean them once this car reaches 100k they are due for renewal you need to renew them if you want to keep this car going you want a long long life of the car replace them with bmw genuine ones i know i tell you guys all the time but it's the same thing i'm going to keep telling you them things need to be replaced there's no point cleaning them you're going to end up with still your errors and that's why a lot of you are still chasing down your problem to this day messaging me saying you've tried this you've tried that your car's cutting out your idols drop in low you when you come to a stop your car's just stalling you're having to restart it that will be the cop problem for that because as i said to you that advances your timing that controls your timing with the oil pressure if they're not correctly because they're electronic then your car is going to it's going to be like a camshaft sensor it's going to stop your car running completely the same as the crankshaft sensor would so make sure you replace them they do fail around the 100k mark they're known to fail you'll feel the car going low down and pound lower down just replace them that's usually the common cause of this so make sure you end up replacing them the next one i'm going to want to speak to you guys about is updating your modules now as you guys know these cars are brilliant once they've been updated now let me tell you when i put mine mine run like a bag of spanners until i updated it anyone who's going to buy an m52 i strongly recommend to go and update their engine because the vanos solenoids if you're going to change them ain't going to do well without the update it's 150 percent they will not run perfect you can change them but you're still going to get the rough idle as i've said to many of you the engine update improves the amount of air going through because as i said to you when these cars are released they're released trying to make the emissions a lot better than the previous vehicle but as the years get on these cars can have are allowed to have less tolerances so bmw update it and make more fuel more air combustion because uh, you know realistically they don't have to be strict on emissions anymore because they're getting older anyway so the update completely cures that and makes the car run at full potential you feel a lot more power low down the throttle feels more responsive than it ever did so it's something i strongly recommend you do as well on your m52 engine if you haven't done it already the next one on these guys is going to be your crankcase ventilation now a lot of you ain't aware of this but that can fail or when that fails that will cause you to burn a lot of oil and a lot of you ain't aware of that you're losing oil thinking it's this thinking it's that and it's actually a crankcase ventilation it's not a hard job to do on these m52s and what ends up happening is the diaphragm inside the ccv itself ends up rupturing with a massive hole leaking oil and it goes all into the manifold and then you're burning oil and also losing oil now the best thing to do is to replace it which you will see on my previous all my videos regarding that and we're also going to have videos coming up doing that again i'm going to show you in full detail to do that how to replace that manifold how to replace the crankcase ventilation but like i said it's a common common problem and i'm going to go over other problems which which it can affect if you don't change that crankcase ventilation unit because as you guys know it's a common common issue especially in winter that's when most people notice it like we are here in the uk now it's a common common problem and that's when you notice it if you ain't got it replaced 
the next one on these guys is going to be the valve cover gasket and the bolts now what a lot of you ain't aware is the valve covers like to leak and they usually leak straight down here but also the bolts and the reason i say the bolts is because when the crankcase ventilation as i just spoke to you about fails and the vacuum increases it ends up pulling these bolts out because and end up breaking them because of too much pressure on the crankcase and what ends up happening it puts too much pressure in the crankcase it ends up popping the the bolts and as you guys know these bolts are aluminium so they're very very light and they're like next to nothing and they talk to yield so too much pressure in the crankcase ends up pushing the crank the crankcase up and then ends up stretching the bolts out so you're better off to get them bolts because some of them will snap when you go to remove them so it, uh, my best bit is to replace them they're only like 20 pound for all of them and it is well well worth it than putting in the re old ones because when you go to talk them they will snap and then they're a nightmare just to get out with a pick believe me on that the next one guys is the water pump and the thermostat now they are known to go out everyone knows about that i always say to people if they're not throwing codes leave them alone don't think of bleeding your coolant and changing your coolant you don't have to change your coolant on the m52 at all i don't know where everyone gets this philosophy from that antifreeze breaks down it doesn't break down providing you look after it your antifreeze is perfect i can show you now like i said my antifreeze on this car right now is still perfect and full and still the same color as it was when i pull it in so that's what I mean. You don't need to change it at all. Do not be full thinking you need to change it. I don't know what a lot of you think. I don't know if you think you're going to get more power from changing your antifreeze or you think the car is going to run better. It's not going to run better. These cars are designed to run hot. A lot of people are messaging me telling me about their temperatures are high. Is this normal? Yes, it is high. This is the whole reason the temperature changes on these cars based on electric therm thermostat and the water pump based on the DME on the driving conditions. A lot of you send me the temperature and it's all done by the DME. You do not control the temperature and that's why BMW didn't put a temperature gauge on the E60s or E90s because they didn't want you knowing the temperature because of this reason. You lot will scare yourself and this is the whole reason why I don't know why you're running around with OBDs worrying about your temperature. If your car's not overheating, you've got no codes for slow deviation on your water pump or any kind of other codes, stop worrying. It's perfectly normal. These cars, the DME controls the water pump, not you. This is the whole reason they never put a temp gauge on these cars so you guys can see the temperature because of that reason. These cars can go to whatever temperature they want, finding they're not overheating. If they overheat, you'll get a message. That's the whole point, your car will go into limp mode. So that's why BMW don't have to put a temp gauge because if you're not stupid with your car and you understand how the engines work, these cars are designed to run hot because of emission purposes. That's the whole, re how, that's the whole way how they bring the emissions down on these engines. The next one, guys, is gonna be your disavalves. valves. Now, as you guys know, I replaced mine on this. Now, I'm getting a lot of people on my last ticking video saying about their ticking. Now, if you've got ticking, that might not even be your hydraulic lifters. What could be happening is your disa flaps are rattling around inside the manifold because they're loose and they're not closing, and that can be called the main cause of your a ticking sound. That can also be the cause of you running low down on power when while you're stalling because the disavalve valve can't close because what's meant to happen is when you start the engine, the disa flaps, on these engines are designed to keep you kept closed when you first start them that's because they're letting load of air through and when you accelerate they open now if your car's got failed disa flaps you'll instantly notice it because you'll be down on power and your power will be complete low down and you'll notice it because you'll be stalling as well because these disa flaps are crucial to the amount of power this car makes and now that's only if you've got a three stage manifold now a lot of you don't have that but if you have check your disa flaps because one that can be the noise of your rattling your ticking and it can also be the a problem why you're running low down on power as well now i strongly recommend to use bmw genuine ones because the chinese ones you do not want to put in your car because they will leave your engine to catastrophic failure as well if they end up going into the manifold and rattling them around net they can end up going into the cylinder and then that can be complete catastrophic for your engine completely so make sure you check them they're not hard to check they require just a few torx bolts and you can check them the one under the manifold ain't too easy but you can get to it still without removing the whole manifold okay so the next one guys is the ignition coils and spark plugs now i get people asking me a lot regarding the spark plugs because the ones i shown on my video i haven't put the description in these are just the normal bosch super 4 spark plugs that's all they are everyone keeps going crazy for them ngk do them they've just got the four electrodes on them all you need to do is just search them up and they come up everywhere you do not need a part number or bmw part number many many companies do them you just need to make sure they gap correctly if you can't gap your spark plugs you shouldn't even, shouldn't even be touching a car because you should be able to gap a spark plug they don't and some of them don't come pre-gapped you just gap them yourself you can buy them in any auto store just make sure they've got four electrodes and just gap them to what bmw recommend on this engine the next one on this is ignition coils now a lot of people go around replacing the ignition coils and only replacing the one or the two that fell 
don't do that replace all six because what's going to happen is when you replace them two you put more stress on the other four and then the other four are going to fail anyway then you're going to be left with another massive expense replace all six while you can they're not expensive they're about 130 dollars 100 pounds for all six and it is way worth to replace all six and you know they're going to last another 100k because they're a common problem and when they fail they're just going to leave you stranded so it's really really not worth running around or just carrying one around in case one fails i don't believe in that never have done never will you guys are going to see when i do another m52 engine from the start i replace everything i go all out when i replace the car for that reason and that's what we're going to be doing the next one on these guys is your tensioner your idler pulley and your belt now you guys have seen in many of my videos me replace that that's a common common problem on these cars and if not replaced and left alone even when you've got if you've had your oil filter housing gasket uh, been leaking i would advise to go and change that immediately because you have oil all over your belt and all over the crank pulley as well and also over the tensioner now if you've got it over the tensioner the tension can end up giving up especially because you use an aluminium bolt and end up coming off you don't want that so it's something i strongly recommend going and changing before it ends up causing your engine to completely fail make sure you change it the parts are very very cheap they're about 60 pounds to replace the tensioner the idler pulley and the belt itself so make sure you go and change that i usually change it before the oil foot housing ends up happening and i change that as well but what i like to do is have all the parts change the oil foot housing the oil coil in case more oil does get there and just take off the old belt tension and idler pulley and replace it all at one go it just makes perfect sense to do that so as you just seen there guys we've just gone over the nine items that will need to be replaced on your bmw with the m52 engine at a hundred thousand miles if not even before do not take this as sole proof that this is going to happen at 100k this happens to a lot of people even before 100k there's people in the us that message me with lower mileage than even 100k and these problems are already happening so it can happen at any time it just depends on the life of the car and how well it's been looked after and how well the owner kept it previously if they drove it like a granny then the car's going to run perfect but if they drove it like crap expect Parts to be failing and you're going to be the one with the expense that's just the way it is with any bmw same as in the uk we end up going to get them after they've been treated like crap that's because a lot of the people could afford them before because of the high price and then we get them when they come down fully on price when they're completely knackered and need complete restoring where people don't want to spend the money because they don't have to they've got the money to go and buy another car but i hope you've enjoyed this video guys if it has if it has helped you please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already this is bmw dr dean here thank you very much for watching and goodbye